Okay, let's have a look at what would happen uh, if we do not use standard conditions. Uh, see what would happen to these electrode potential values and see what would happen to a value of E cell. So um, uh, we've got our, here we've got our um, zinc and uh, zinc and copper electrochemical cell. We've got a, you know, a zinc rod sticking in a beaker of Zn2 plus, a copper sitting in the beaker of copper 2 plus. Okay, this is the conventional cell diagram for it here. And we know the E cell is equal to E right minus E left, 0.34 minus minus 0.76. That gives us a uh, this E cell value of 1.1 volt. Okay, um, so we've got our copper value up there plus 0.34 and our zinc value. We can show that graphically and put it here. You can think of it as if you have a look at this, this little diagram. Um, so you've got your copper up at the top, uh, 0.34 volts, and you've got your zinc down at the bottom, minus 0.76 volts. Okay. And the distance between them is 1.1 volt. Okay. And that's the E cell value. Okay. So let us uh, now see what would happen if we mess about with the concentrations of copper. So we know that E cell this standard this standard value means concentrations uh, of one mole per decimeter cubed and that's the concentrations we've got of the copper two plus and the zinc two plus and our reading on the voltmeter there would be 1.1 volt right going to change the concentrations then so let me let's think what we can do right let's make that copper solution weaker let's change that to say 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed right how will that how will that affect e cell well let's have a look at this uh, this equilibrium right if we decrease the copper concentration from 1 to 0.5 le chatelier tells us that the equilibrium is going to go that way if it goes that way it's going to be better at giving out electrons. So this will become more negative. Now, if that becomes more negative, so not if it becomes smaller, right? We've got E cell is equal to E right minus E left. So that 0.34 is going to be smaller, say 0.2 or something. So that means the E cell will be lower. So if you drop the copper, uh, drop the Cu2 plus concentration, the E cell will be smaller. Okay, we can think of it on this diagram here. All right, this one here. So, you know, if we lower, if this one starts, if that, that 0.34 starts getting lower, the distance between that and the zinc at the bottom there is going to be smaller. And so E cell will drop. Right, now let's see what would happen if I rub all this out. Let's say we leave the copper at one at one, and that's this time. Let's change the zinc concentration. Okay. So let's make the zinc, let's make the zinc concentration higher. Okay. So, so let's say Zn. Let's make it lower, sorry. Zn2 plus concentration, let's say it's now 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed instead of one mole per decimeter cubed. Right, what's going to happen to this equilibrium here? Right, if you lower Zn2 plus concentration, you're going to push that one to the left. That means it's going to be better at giving out these two electrons. That means it's going to be more negative. Okay, so maybe minus 0.96 or something, yeah. Right, if you make that a bigger negative number, what happens to E cell? E cell will become bigger. And if you want to have a look at it this way, um, right, if you make this value more negative, make it go further down, well, the distance between that and that is going to be bigger. So E cell is going to be bigger. So you can see if you change the ion concentrations, 
you will change the electro potential value and you will change the value of E cell. So it's important that you know uh, how, you know, you're given a, a particular electrochemical cell like that one. What will happen if you increase or decrease the concentration of either iron? You should be able to predict it. So you need to go to these half equations, yeah, use the Chatelier's principle, see if they're more or less likely to give out electrons and, and see what goes from there. Right. Okay, I think I need to tidy this up before we then move on to the next bit. So what we're going to say now is, uh, instead of having a voltmeter there, uh, instead of having a voltmeter, and remember voltmeters have got very high resistance, they hardly draw any color, current at all. Instead of having a voltmeter, let's put a light bulb in there. So we're going to let current flow through this, through the circuit. Okay, there's our light bulb giving out light because it's drawing current. Okay, so we started off, we started off with the zinc concentration of one mole per decimeter cube. Now, I write the half equation here, Zn2 plus, plus 2e minus goes to Zn. Right, if we allow current to flow, current flows, right, so electrons are gonna move out of there so if current flows, the zinc concentration, uh, is Zn2 plus, will increase. But what will that do to the position of the equilibrium? Well, the equilibrium will move, which will, will, will try and decrease the zinc. So the equilibrium moves to the right. If it moves to the right, it means it's taking in electrons. More willing to take in electrons. So therefore it becomes, it's taking electron becomes more positive. So our zinc, uh, the, the E, the electrode of the Zn2 plus Zn is gonna become more positive. That's what's going to happen there. Let's think what happens on the copper side. So we've got this half equation, Cu2 plus and 2e minus goes to Cu. Right, this is taking in electrons. The electrons are flowing down into the copper. So that means the copper concentration, copper tube concentration is going to go down. Right, what's that going to do to the position of this equal? Lucia Tellier tells us if Cu2 is going to go make the equilibrium favor that direction, so that means the equilibrium goes to the left. That means it's more willing uh, to give away electrons. Increased tendency to give away electrons, therefore, that becomes more negative. So, all the time. The, the copper, the, the E value, the E value of the copper system is becoming more negative and the E value of the zinc system is becoming more positive. That's obviously going to make the E cell value drop. As you draw more current, E cell value drops, doesn't it? So if you look at the, just um, at this little um, diagram again, so we've, got our, we've got our copper value. Um, up at the top, sorry, done. Got a copper value up at the top there. Um, got a zinc value down there. Now we said as you draw current, the copper is going to become more negative. That's going to go down, and the zinc is going to be more positive. That's going to go up. So all the time, the E cell value will drop, and eventually, the E cell value will become zero and the electrons will no longer flow. Now, if you use, imagine you're using this as, um, as a way of delivering, uh, you're using it as, as an electrochemical cell, as like a battery to provide electricity. You would, what would happen to the bulb? It would get, it would start off bright, and as the voltage dropped, it would get dimmer and dimmer, and eventually it would go out. And you'd say in everyday language, say the battery has gone flat, that's what you'd say. 
and that exact that is exactly why batteries die. Uh, the moment you start using them, uh, the voltage will start to drop, um, and eventually fall to zero. And you, you're probably not very familiar with this sort of thing now because uh, you, you know uh, torches used to have a filament bulb in them, and um, you know when you put new batteries in it, it'd be really bright, um, but Almost immediately you start using it, it'll get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. People use LEDs and lithium ion batteries and stuff now, so you don't really notice that. But it's it's a very familiar everyday situation. Batteries will run flat and the voltage they provide will drop. Okay, um, so let's have a look at some more another effect of um uh, what can happen when you have non-standard conditions, how that can change electro potential. So if we have a look at these two half equations, you've got manganese dioxide solid. Uh, so, uh, manganese dioxide solid. Um, I'll move that down a bit. Uh, you need some acid. And it gets reduced to Mn2 plus, and you've got two waters. Now, E cell for that. Is one point plus one point two three volts, and let's have a look at another one we've got here. We've got chlorine uh, and two electrons. That goes to two Cl minus, and the value for that one is plus one point three three volts. Okay, so now the question is, um, if you add HCl to MnO2 solid will chlorine gas be generated? That's the question. So we're going to try and predict this. Okay. So what we do is we look at our, as usual, we look at our, the, I should put a standard value in there. We look at our um, electro potential. Okay, and we decide right which one is the most positive. Well, it's the chlorine one is the most positive. So this one is the best at giving away at sorry, taking in electrons. So we'd expect this reaction to go forward and take in electrons. This one is the most negative, so this one would be best at giving away electrons, so that one would go backwards. So what we would expect, the reaction we would expect would be to be Mn2 plus plus two H2O, plus two Cl minus, sorry, plus Cl2, goes to MnO2, four H plus, and two Cl minus. So the answer to this question in blue here is, would HCl, if you added HCl, the answer is no, it wouldn't we're saying the exact opposite does will will chloride ions and react with that to go backwards uh, no it doesn't we're predicting from the electro potential values that it, this reaction will go forwards uh, the chlorine will oxidize the mn2 plus not the other way around however this is actually used this this is this method here is used to make chlorine in the lab it's a good way of generating chlorine you add some concentrated hydrochloric acid and that's the key the concentrated hydrochloric acid to mno2 solid and then you do need to warm it up a little bit and it will generate chlorine so it looks like our prediction from the electrochemical cell values is incorrect now uh, the first thing to notice really i think is look at how different these two values are there's not much of a difference in voltage there. There's only one tenth of a volt. So they're pretty close. And then the second thing to think about is we have said, I've said here, um, we're going to add concentrated hydrochloric acid. Conk HCl. So that means the hydrogen ion concentration is going to be way bigger than one mole per decimeter cubed which is the standard value, for which it should be at least standard. And also the chloride ion concentration is going to be way bigger than one mole per decimeter cubed. 
So, right, this is going to be really, really high. So that is going to have a tendency to push this equilibrium backwards. In other words, it's going to be better at giving away electrons. So it's going to be more negative. And if we look at this one, we've got hydrogen ion concentrations here very high, not one mole per decimeter cubed. What's that going to do? It's going to push this equilibrium, it's going to try and use up the hydrogen ion, it's going to push it that way. In other words, it's going to be better at taking in electrons, it's going to be more positive. So if you make this one a bit more negative and make this one a bit more positive, you can end up flipping the positions, okay, which would mean the reaction would go in the opposite direction. So this explains why high hydrochloric, a high term, this reaction is possible uh, when Cl minus concentration is high and H plus concentration is also high. And also to help it on its way, you do have to heat it. So what do you think that tells us about delta H for that reaction? If you can push it forward by heating it, well, if it's an equilibrium reaction, that means in this direction, it must be endothermic as well. So by changing the temperature, you can help it along. And don't forget the standard, yeah, that also refers to 298 Kelvin. So if you change the temperature, sometimes you can also change the direction of a reaction. So, um, yeah, if you change, so the whole point of this video is if you change the, hydro, the ion concentrations or the temperature, you will change the value of E because that refers to, you know, standard conditions. You don't have standard conditions, you'll change the value of E. Sometimes that means um, the predictions that you make using standard values may not be quite right.